One question I've been asked quite a few times is how much defence do you actually need? So this video is going to be looking at that. Now my account is 2.6 billion points just over. You can see here. So this is the defence I have for this account. Now I think this is pretty much optimal. I do clean off all my planets once per day. You want the fodder, rocket launchers, light lasers with the bigger guns like Gauss cannons and plasma turrets. Iron cannons and heavy lasers are okay as well, but I normally focus on fodder with the heavy guns. I think that's the most effective defense in my opinion, having tested out quite a few defenses. Don't forget your shield domes as well. You should also build some anti-ballistic missiles. I think somewhere between 80 and 100 is ideal. The important thing to remember here though is you're going to need a missile silo and that does require fields unfortunately so you definitely don't want to go too high with this. I do think though level 8 is pretty decent. Going up to 10 might be an idea as well. If you go too much higher though it's just going to cost too many fields I think so somewhere between 8 and 10 as I mentioned is what I recommend with this. So I do take all the resources off at the end of the day. I leave a few cargoes on the planet for that. No more than 5,000 to 6,000 of the large cargoes. Then maybe 4,000 small. That sometimes stays there overnight. Doesn't matter too much if they get hit, but it's useful for farming and taking off the resources. That's the main reason why I leave them there. To give an idea for what I'm trying to protect with my defence, that's the mines I have on this planet. 48, 41 and 44. I have a level 23 fusion reactor, no solar satellites and a few crawlers as well. I actually have too many crawlers but I don't see any point in deconstructing them now. Plus they're very cheap to build anyway. If I go over to the resource settings, now some of you may have noticed this is not in English. I don't know why that is. It's a bug in the game. What I'm looking for here though is what's called palatili. That sounds like pasta or something like that. But that translates into crawlers. I only need 1170. Then my production's at the bottom. You can see them here for this planet. All my planets are pretty similar to this so... That gives you an idea for what I'm trying to protect, but as I mentioned, bear in mind I'm only protecting 24 hours worth of production at the very most, so there really is no point in building a massive defence. But now we move on to the question, should you build defence on a moon? Well, personally I think you should build a little bit just to make a moon destruction harder, but that should be your only reason for building defence on a moon. So something like this moon here I think is ideal. That just makes it a bit harder for someone to pop the moon. Of course they can still fire missiles at the moon and destroy all of the defence but just a little bit of defence like that may put off some players and that's what I have done and that I think is pretty much optimal for that. Completely useless fact but I did actually name all my moons after Pokemon. This was kind of a joke aimed at another alliance on the game. Okay, I clicked the planet there. You can see them there though, all Pokemon names. All older Pokemon as well. They're the only ones I really know if I'm being honest. I don't know the more modern ones. Anyway, a completely useless fact I thought I would share with everyone. So I think that covers the basics of defence. A few things not to do. Do not leave Death Stars lying about on the planet when you are offline. This is quite a common error. I know it's very tempting just to leave maybe 1,000 Death Stars just sitting there, but it will increase the profits if you do get hit for the attacker. So don't do that. You want to leave as little as possible on the planet when you're offline. Don't try and defend it. It will just go horribly wrong. And as you saw with my setup, I do have a fusion reactor. 
That means if I do get attacked, it doesn't really damage the energy production. You can't really use solar plants. They don't produce much energy and over relying on sats can be a disaster. That's why I have gone for fusion reactor for a safer setup. You can see here solar satellites produce one energy on this planet. So with a slot 15 setup, you kind of have to use the fusion reactor. But that's something to bear in mind anyway. To finish, I will give a short life forms update. This is what I've done on this planet so far. It's getting there. It's looking pretty good now. There's some decent high level buildings here. I do want to increase though the buildings that increase resources. Magma Forge. This increases metal production. Crystal Refinery increases crystal and deuterium obviously for deuterium. The other two buildings I need to increase are the Rune Forge to go from tier 1 to tier 2 and the Orctorium to go from tier 2 to tier 3. I'm working on that slowly though. Increasing the amount of population is how you get to the final life form research is here. You can see here that requires 112000 of the tier 3 population. Then those final two researches require even more. There's one research here that I'm really liking the look of for a completely free player and that's the gravitation sensors. That increases the amount of dark matter that can be earned on expeditions. So I'm going to go for that on every single planet. Get that as high as possible. Now the bonus isn't exactly massive, but if I can get that to level 20 on every single planet, that will be a 30% increase to the amount of dark matter I find on expeditions. I hope that stacks with the expedition event when you get nine times the dark matter. If it does, then I should be able to get enough dark matter to play this game without spending any more money on it. Well, that's the idea anyway. You can see here, 373,000 all at found dark matter and none of it purchased. And there we go, I'm going to end this video. I hope you found that interesting. Always remember though, the best defense is to just not leave anything lying about. If you do try and hide your fleet behind a massive defense, you can almost guarantee someone will hit it eventually. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is always very much appreciated. I've included a previous video on the screen. Check that out if you want to do so. There's a playlist in the pinned comment with all my O-game videos in. You can also subscribe from here if you want to do so. And thanks for watching.